I purchased all three of the ModLite PL350 pistol light configurations. Here is what I learned when I ran them head to head to head. As usual, I put these lights through both practical and lab testing. First up, I tested in our warehouse space with this menacing subject. This space is about 40 feet and has both near and far objects, which can highlight how focused or wide a beam is. In this test, we can see that the PLHV2 has a hotspot with some spill. The OKW has the most intense focus, but the biggest difference was for the PLH5K, which had the widest beam, and that provides the most data about the surrounding environment. For instance, with the PLH5K, I could see inside the shelving area to the right. I could also see the subject's feet and hands while still illuminating his face, and the skin tone was more vibrant with the PLH5K. I asked our subject to rate looking into these lights, and all of them were in the painful plus range. This means that it's very difficult to look directly at the light operator, and when the subject does look in that direction, it's hard to see anything more than a wall of light. Yeah, I can't look at that one at all. This is what we want, as it allows the operator to control the subject more effectively. I wanted to get a good feel for each of these heads under the stars by punching through truck headlights and then focusing on a target in the shadows and finally by shooting some steel. First up, I tried looking for vehicle occupants against headlights. Here, all three of the lights allowed positive identification of the subject in the passenger seat, but the OKW head was so focused that it did not include both the driver and passenger areas in that spotlight. The PLH5K was best at casting light underneath the truck's headlights, and the PLHV2 fell in between. To get a feel for positive identification at distance, I placed a subject at approximately 45 yards wearing dark clothes and under a tree. All three heads allowed for identification, but the OKW head was the most effective at providing detail on the subject's activities. The PLHV2 was almost as good, and the PLH5K struggled a bit at this range. I finished up by shooting a magazine through the pistol with each head. The OKW head punched through the muzzle smoke like a lightsaber. It's just right through the smoke. <laughs> the PLH-V2 and the 5K both had more light reflecting back at the operator, but with all three lights, the reflection back from the muzzle smoke did not prevent me from getting a good target picture. If you want more weapon light videos, hit subscribe and the notification bell down below. Candela is a measurement of light intensity in a particular direction, and that allows for identification of target details. Plus, strong candela can cause the subject to turn away from the intense light. While I recognize the need for both candela and lumens, candela is more important. This is why we gather both max candela data as well as capture candela at various angles. As I've stated before, our equipment measures low versus the manufacturer's ratings, but these numbers can still allow accurate comparison from light to light. For max candela, the PLHV2 had 27,000, the PLH5K had 21,000, and the OKW had a staggering 35,000 candela. While our practical testing shows us how much light floods out around the focus point, this candela test at angle provides the data to support those observations. In our graph, you can visualize the angle on the x-axis as the width of the beam and intensity level shown on the y-axis. As expected, the OKW leads raw output at the very center of the hotspot. However, as soon as we get away from the center, the PLH5K starts leading by a significant amount. While the numbers are small on the chart, the PLH5K puts out 10 times the amount of candela at just five degrees off center versus the OKW. The PLH5K has a much wider beam and that's backed up by a higher lumen output. Even the PLH-V2 has three times the amount of candela at five degrees than the OKW. This puts data behind what we've already seen, that the OKW provides a very focused hotspot, but provides very little of the peripheral flood.
We throw our lights into the integrating sphere and ran them until the batteries are dead or effectively dead. In this case, the PLH5K continued to run on for over three and a half hours, and I eventually turned off the testing when that light was still producing 11 lumens. Now, what this data says is if you want the head with the strongest lumen output for the longest time, it's the PLH5K. It provides 70 minutes with output over 500 lumens. Neither of the other heads can provide 500 lumens for five minutes, let alone an hour. Now, color temperature makes lights seem cool or warm. When a light is too cool or too warm, our eyes do not pick up colors very well, so we need it to be within a range. And within that range, you can go slightly warmer or slightly cooler. Slightly warmer colors will not reflect as harshly off of certain environmental conditions, such as rain or snow, and that's why fog lights are tinted yellow. Light color also affects our perception of output, with cooler lights actually appearing brighter for the same output of light. Here we see the PLHV2 and the OKW coming in a little bit cooler, about 5700 Kelvin, and the PLH5K coming in quite close to the advertised 5000 Kelvin. Now, to my eyes, I prefer the PLH5K light color. As we saw in the warehouse space, it gives me a little bit better contrast of skin tones. So which head to choose? Each of these heads is a gigantic step forward from what has come before. I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. I like the PLH5K for a few reasons. The warmer light output gives better contrast of browns. The beam pattern gives me good peripheral view. The runtime is nearly an hour and a half, and even though it doesn't punch as far as the other two heads, it does have a higher max candela rating than any of the non-mod lights we have tested. The PLH5K head feels like a stronger version of the X300U, and by stronger, I mean it has almost three times the candela output. However, if it were my only light and I needed to positively identify targets at 50 yards, then I would select the OKW, which has a very limited spill, putting all the lumens into a concentrated hotspot. Now, I agree with ModLight that the PLHV2 is a good compromise between those two, and that might be what you're looking for. I've made my choice. Let us know which head you're going to choose in the comments below.